Red people, how are we today? Welcome back into the greenhouse. It is finally spring. There's beautiful light in the greenhouse. It is warm in here. I'm kind of a little bit sweaty. So I heard a secret and it's about you. So you're thinking of wanting to build a greenhouse. Well, look no further, my friends. Today, I will be talking to you about how I've made my greenhouse what I think is essential, some tips, some advice, some things that I would do differently if I had a chance again. But I have a feeling today's video is going to be a long one. So sit back. I hope that this will provide you with the information that you need if you are wanting to build a greenhouse for yourself or if you're just curious. So my mistress just fell off again, even though I just put it up this morning. I'll fix that later. So this is going to be as comprehensive as it can be. So apologies for the long video in advance. So let's start off with why you might actually want to get a greenhouse. So more of the pros of the greenhouse, if you will. There is no doubt while I've had this greenhouse for about nine months now that I have seen exponential growth in regards to all of my plants, uh, particularly all of the ones that are more tropical, ones that require a little bit more light. They have done immense immensely greater from being inside and indoors into the greenhouse. And one of the reasons why that might be is because of the natural light that it gets, even though that I do have to put a shade cloth on just so that it doesn't get any direct sunlight. And also that I've got in the greenhouse itself some controlled conditions. So things like humidity and temperature are kept to a relatively small range. It does fluctuate. Having a greenhouse also safeguards all of the plants. So for example, anything to do with wind or the water, having too much rain Rainfall, having too little rainfall, too much sunlight, etc. The biggest pro for me in having a greenhouse, actually there's two pros. So one of them being that watering is a breeze, that you really don't have to worry about um, water going on the ground or over watering or watering trickling from the pot. Majority of the day I just grab my hose and I don't have to think about it, that I just water my plants and it's super, super easy. Also, when I'm doing all of my care things, like doing some pest control, I don't actually have to worry about all of the residue um, going into the house. It honestly saves so much stress and I don't have to be too careful about it. So another thing is when I had all of my plants indoors, that because they were all in different locations, I would have to um, grab all the plants and kind of take them to a certain spot, whether that's in the bathroom or outside, to water them, to do pest control. But having them all in one greenhouse makes it super easy that you only have to be in one vicinity for care. And my second favorite reason is that this space, this greenhouse is like my little sanctuary. I come here when I feel sad, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, or when I just need to escape the outside. I come into my greenhouse and all I have to think about are my plants. It is a place of calm, it is a place of stillness, and I love to reflect in here and hang out in here as well. So some of you may be wondering, why did I decide to get a greenhouse? And one of the reasons was it was just a idea that was in my mind and I was looking at home decor and designs and I came across a house that had a beautiful glass house um, in the backyard, but it wasn't necessarily one that was like this. It was a little bit larger and it had beautiful, amazing tropical plants, but in the inside it was more of like a entertaining area so people could sit down. There was lots of chairs, a table, somewhere where you could hang out as well as like eat, relax, chill out and I think that's one of the things that kind of triggered in my brain that I would love to have. By those photos I was inspired and wanting to create a space that could be surrounded by nature as well as social interactions with my friends and family. So one day I still hope that I am able to do so. So I am hoping that I can get a entertainment slash glass house one day, um, but that is definitely not in the near future. And also have my own tropical oasis. So this is sort of getting there, it just doesn't have the entertainment slash hanging out element. So if I have friends over, it's not like we can sit down and enjoy all the plants. I think only about two or three people can be here at a time. And so why am I doing this video? So this video is for you. I want to inspire and push you if you've been having those thoughts of wanting a greenhouse yourself. The more people creating self-love nature spaces, the better. It's better for our mental health, our well-being, and it honestly brings me so much joy and happiness. So if you decide to do it yourself, which I really hope you do. Hopefully it'll bring you lots of happiness and we can finally bring nature and people closer together. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start off with some tips and then we're going to move on with things that I think 
are a little bit mandatory and things that are also optional. I also want to point out that this video doesn't necessarily just apply to um, bigger greenhouses. I'm even talking about greenhouses like this plastic Bunnings greenhouse that I have here. So not everything will be applicable, but we're going to be still talking about humidity, um, temperature, airflow, all of that good stuff. So don't think that this is only applying to people that want to make big greenhouses. This can also apply for more simpler, cuter greenhouses just like that one. So let's start off with some tips. Something that I wish someone told me is that it is very difficult to buy a greenhouse and put it all together. So get some help. You will definitely come across some troubleshooting. I was lucky and I had Jacob help me with pretty much all of it. I would say this was his creation and I just put everything in it. He's definitely more of the handyman and the uh, critical thinker or problem solver. So he was immensely helpful in doing that. If you are thinking of making a greenhouse, I would say grab someone that can do some problem solving with. Um, it may get frustrating at some point, but it is definitely better if you have a helping hand. You definitely get what you pay for. So I know that there are the cheaper options in the greenhouse, um, which are completely fine. But for people that are in Melbourne, I find that it is a bit harder to retain the heat and the cold and the humidity if the structure of the greenhouse isn't that great. So for example, when you're sliding in the polycarbonate or um, the other material that they use for your greenhouse, if it doesn't line up, there are going to be gaps within the greenhouse. I do know that if you pay a lot at the beginning, it will save you more money later on just because um, I'll be talking about like heating, humidity, because there is electricity happening within the greenhouse. It is definitely more cost effective if you spend a bit more at the beginning just to get a good quality greenhouse because then you don't have to try and combat for insulation. So the model that I have for my greenhouse, in case some of you were curious, I'll have to link it below. I believe this is a maize hybrid greenhouse. I think it's like three by two. The only complaint that I have about this greenhouse is that some of the panels do not exactly fit. We combat that with bubble wrap and I absolutely adore this greenhouse I chose this one in particular because it was more like the clear version of a greenhouse I believe the roof is some sort of hybrid so it's polycarbonate um, but it's more clear rather than that like aluminium silvery color like I said my inspiration was wanting a glass house so I knew that I wanted something a bit more clear but of course that comes with the cons of trying to shade the greenhouse I need to fix that When you first build the greenhouse, I know that I was super excited that I wanted to put all of my plants in straight away, but there has to be some sort of patience and you have to do test runs because depending on the season, the greenhouse might drop to a very low degree at night or um, during the day, it might get really hot, especially in summer. So you want to kind of monitor what it's going to be like um, before you put your plants in because <laughs> your girl put some plants, I believe it was my string of hearts when I first um, got the greenhouse and they burned to a crisp <laughs> so please learn from me just put some plants that are a little bit more hardier you'll definitely have to monitor and do your tests first alrighty so let's start from the ground up so you're gonna want to one of course buy your greenhouse sort out which one you would like um, and then two what me and Jacob did for our flooring of the greenhouse so one thing that is insanely important is that you want to level out the greenhouse floor. One of the reasons why this is so important is because if it's not leveled, the greenhouse will be a bit tilted or not um, structurally correct and which means that you're going to find problems when you're inserting all of the panels um, and doing the framework. So you have to make sure that the ground is a hundred percent leveled. So once you have your greenhouse up, moved to the flooring first. So there was no grass so we didn't have to put any like weed mats or anything like that. So we ended up putting um, a layer of sand and then some pebbles and the reason why I actually recommend doing sand and pebbles is that the ground for the sand um, acts as insulation when the atmosphere is really hot, the ground is quite cold. It kind of counteracts for the greenhouse. In reverse, when it is really cold and in winter, the ground is relatively hot. So it 
kind of acts as like a thermoregulator. Additionally, I have pebbles everywhere to add humidity uh, to the greenhouse so that when I'm watering all of my plants, um, it doesn't straight away sink into the ground, it stays on the pebbles and when it's warm or when it's hot, um, that acts as an additional humidity element. What did I do next? After I did the flooring, I would say that I did the shelves. So I was recommended by a lot of my friends that I should get galvanized steel for my shelving just because it wouldn't rust um, and I wouldn't have any issues with water. I actually ended up going with some cheap Kmart shelves and honestly, they are fantastic. They have not given me any issues. I believe they're like $30, $40. Water has gotten on it all the time and there seems to be no rust. So it hasn't given me any grief. But yeah, I know that a lot of people say galvanized steel is really good for a greenhouse. I'd say you definitely want tiers because if you have just like benches and rows, um, I don't think that it is very space effective for your plants. Now this was definitely one of the hardest parts, trying to get the electricity through to the greenhouse. So the main house or my parents' house is um, in that direction just there um, and we had to get a huge outdoor extension cord, wire it all up into the greenhouse and hide it. I'll put some footage just to show you guys exactly what we did. The biggest thing that I found with the electricity is that I was quite nervous having so much humidity, um, so much water and electricity as well in the same vicinity. So I got a tip from my friend Hayley and Jake who had a greenhouse before I did um, and they put all of the electricals in a little container so it wouldn't get wet um, and it's kind of just like a safety precaution. Jacob managed to drill some holes in it to insert the cords and then put it with a bit of sealant so that no water could get in. The next thing that was also really difficult and I think we had so much troubleshooting this part in particular was the misters. Still gives me the most grief as you saw with all of the falling. But I just got mine from Bunnings and honestly it was quite easy to set up but making it actually work was quite difficult. But we do have a set timer which I will also link below. It's just a little gadget that you plug in with the misters so that it is more automated that you don't actually have to do it manually and I think that has been my saving grace throughout everything. The one thing that I definitely recommend in having your greenhouse is misters. Helps with the humidity and also watering your plants as well. I should also point out that these misters don't actually um, start until about halfway into the greenhouse. So that's the very first nozzle there and then it goes all the way down and it has fallen off again. <laughs> Um, but it's just so that I can keep all of the electronics, which is at the very front of the greenhouse, um, away from all of the water in the mist. One thing that I would highly, highly recommend as well is if it's possible to actually have a rain tank because my plants love it. Another thing that is super duper essential when it comes to greenhouses, particularly for people like myself that live in Melbourne where in Australia the direct sunlight can be so intense that it would burn in a couple of minutes. So I have a shade cloth over the greenhouse. I chose to do a white one just because I know that you can get black, green and white. I'm sure there's other colors as well. I definitely didn't want black because black absorbs the heat so even if um, the, it was a lot of shade that there would be heat um, coming onto the roof. I chose white or like a gray so it reflects the sunlight and just because green was just too in your face for me so that is why I went for the white. I believe this one is 80% shade cloth um, which is pretty dense, but I do know that some people actually do multiple layers, but I just use the 80% and I think that's fine for my plant. So we are coming into warmer months. Uh, we're going into spring. I'm sure summer will be here very quickly. One of the things that is definitely essential for me is a fan because we definitely want air flows. When you have a lot of the misters going off, um, as well as watering your plants a lot, if the humidity is, I would say, above 80% all the time, you definitely want a fan just so that there is a bit of airflow and circulation. I did find that when I had my greenhouse always very humid, I would get fungal or bacterial infections, which is one of the reasons why you have to have a fan for good airflow. And it also cools the greenhouse down. And this is definitely optional, and I do know that I will be bringing back my huge air evaporative cooling into the greenhouse when it hits summer again. If you are in a very hot climate um, and you are worried about your plants getting too hot, I do think that having a cooling system in it um, is very beneficial. I know for me that it takes a lot of the stress um, 
of thinking that all of my plants might fry in summer when it's like 40 degrees every day but definitely it is not essential but definitely beneficial so on the flip side of that is we just came out of winter and trying to keep this greenhouse warm was definitely a struggle for me i just have one of the heaters that you can get from kmart or ones that you kind of essentially just put in your bathroom so that is definitely not cost effective and I know this for a fact there are definitely other options that are better I know there are oil heaters um, but the oil heater that I tried de definitely didn't heat the whole greenhouse I felt like it was only that one segment of the greenhouse that it was in that it was heating up but I found that the heating like your bathroom heating because it has a fan it circulated the air and it was more balanced in terms of like the temperature depending on the spots in the greenhouse. I know that there is like heating tubes as well that uses hot water to keep it warmer. I would definitely have to experiment with the heating so that's one thing I would do differently. To what I'm not actually sure but I do know that I want it to be a little bit more cost effective in terms of like the amount of energy it uses um, and how much I'm actually paying for it as well. So this one is definitely more of like on the optional side but I highly 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 recommend particularly at the beginning of doing your greenhouse is a temp and humidity monitor. The one that I have currently is so good because you can actually access it um, anywhere online on your phone so sometimes I'll be at work and I'm wondering hmm I wonder what the humidity and temperature in the greenhouse is and I will take a look right then and there so I'll show you exactly the model that I've got I think there might be newer ones but I'll show you what I've got so it's the Lacrosse View app. So you can see there, that is the app there. And I just took that photo of my greenhouse, just where the moss wall is. Um, but I can check the humidity as well as the temperature in here. My gosh, the humidity is low today. After this is done, I'm definitely going to be putting the humidifier on as well as um, watering the plants. <laughs> that is low. And the best part about this one is one, you can access it on your phone. Two, you can see it at any stage at any time. It is via Wi-Fi and not necessarily Bluetooth. And additionally, you can set up these like um, alerts. So if it were to go above or below a certain temperature or humidity you'll get an alert and that was really important to me when I was looking for a temperature humidity control center thing so for example I've got here temperature I'm not sure if you can see but um, if it goes above 35 or below 10 I will get an alert on my phone so I can quickly run to the greenhouse and adjust how I need <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be this one regardless I'll link it down below um, but it is very very good to keep track of the greenhouse while you're gone I do actually have a humidifier in here even though I do have my misters on going at the moment every two hours for five minutes I do find that especially in the middle of the day now that it's getting hotter that it does dip so I do have my six liter humidifier just up over there I do actually have a grow light that I've had for a while I think I've had it for about since like November anyway and I haven't really used it but once I built up the greenhouse I was like I definitely have to utilize it and put it in here which I used during winter um, so that's something optional that you can think about that particularly in winter when there's less sun and you still want your plants to grow as if it's still growing season um, you can definitely put grow lights in the greenhouse and lastly something that was a game changer for me for the greenhouse was putting solar panels I'm very lucky that my dad decided that he wanted to put solar panels to kind of help the house and save some money on electricity and luckily for me that also includes using the electricity for my greenhouse during winter I definitely still feel that I have to pay quite a lot for all of the heating but during summer the greenhouse is self-sustained it pays for itself with all of the solar electricity that gets put into the house it's not very economical to have a greenhouse particularly if you've got like the heater and the cooling um, but if you put solar panels I think that it really works out well you save some money you're recycling energy but of course it is just optional it is not a must things that I would actually consider doing differently if I had another chance was one to actually 
permanently secure the misters to the greenhouse because at the moment I'm kind of just using electricity tape and it falls all the time as you saw before. A follower on Instagram actually suggested that there are hooks that I can buy and put the tube misters on so I'm planning to do that just so that I don't have to keep sticking it back into place every day. Two, I'd probably find a better heater as well and additionally I would also get a bigger greenhouse if I had the space to. You will actually fill it up a lot faster than you think particularly if you're putting things like a bench or a chair in it which I highly recommend by the way just so that you have somewhere to chill in the greenhouse. It fills up quick and if I could go back in time I would actually get a larger greenhouse. So that pretty much wraps up all of my ins and outs of what I think is really helpful for people that are planning to build a greenhouse for the very first time. Overall it was such a fun experience and even though it gave me and Jacob so much grief at the beginning it was so much fun to tackle on this project for myself, for my plants and I do not regret it whatsoever. It's honestly my favorite place in the whole world to be in. Some days I come in with my phone, I sit here looking at my plants for hours, I come in, I tend to my plants and it is like four to five hours later and I just feel like I'm detached from the world. I love it with all my heart and I'm very grateful to Jacob for helping me with this project because it was actually his idea. So I remember showing him a photo of a greenhouse and I said to him I would love to have one or one day and he said to me why don't we just do it? But it was definitely Jacob that executed it all so I'm very thankful and it is truly my sanctuary. And I hope that when you guys um, come into these videos that you kind of feel that it's yours as well. Well. So if you are thinking about doing a greenhouse or making one or building one or even if it's a shade house because I know that that's quite popular up in like Queensland and Sydney where it's a little bit warmer so they don't have to have it enclosed as such but if you are thinking about it and you think that you are in a good financial point to do it, I cannot recommend it enough. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to message me on my Instagram. I'm always more than happy to answer any of your questions as best as I can with the greenhouse. Know that I am definitely not an expert. This was one of those things where I did my research and I asked around with friends with other greenhouses and this is what came out of it. And I'm still honestly learning. I first got it in summer and then um, that was a big learning curve. I just experienced my first winter with it and I also had to learn a lot of things. I think it's just a huge experiment and to anyone that is thinking of doing it I hope I can push you into doing it in the most positive way possible or even if you are slowly working up into building a greenhouse even try doing something small like this where you can have a little fan in there, a little humidifier, some grow lights. Thank you so so much for hanging out in the greenhouse with me again. Hopefully this inspires you or at least in informs you of things that you were curious about. The more greenhouses that I can get, um, whether it's in Australia, whether it's like in a different country, the better because I just think that that relationship between plants and humans and I think that doing this and bringing um, nature closer to our door is such a beneficial thing. I'll catch you guys in the greenhouse next video. Until then, stay safe, keep on planting and I will see you then. Bye guys! Mwah!